<laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, three. Welcome to Security Guy Radio, SecurityGuyTV.com at Black Hat 2017. What's your name, young man? My name is TJ Lair. Thanks and so what's, much for having me. What's the name of your company? Uh, Cloudera. And what does Cloudera do? So Cloudera is a next generation platform for advanced analytics and machine learning. So as people continue to become hyper-connected and digitally transform their enterprise, they're trying to store, process, and analyze larger volumes of information. And our number one use case is cybersecurity analytics. That's what brings us to Black Hat. Wow, Man. that yeah. was a lot. <laughs> and maybe if we can simplify it for the viewers at home, is, I mean, as, the com as companies have evolved and yeah. allowed their employees to access cloud services, download things, privileges, social media. It kind of takes all that data in, yep. processes it, and identifies threats and risks. Absolutely. So we are right? an open source platform. Uh, oh, so we, we bring together uh, 26 open source components into our platform. Wow. And we help people uh, manage that platform, secure that platform. But for our customers, what's really valuable to them is being able to store enormous amounts of information. So we're talking wow. about a Google search S experience across all of your information, and then being able to apply large scale machine learning and artificial intelligence to detect anomalies against petabytes worth of information. So if a user's doing something, Anomalous. And does that go into the user behavior analysis as well? When when Betty Sue is used to accessing certain sites or going to a certain directory on the network, and then all of a sudden her machine or credentials, you start seeing nefarious activity. Is that incorporated into this platform? Correct, it is. So we have a few different models or algorithms that you can deploy on top of our platform. We have a vendor community uh, that is building on top of our applications or on top of our platform to get the benefits that I just described in terms of scaling the data processing and uh, analysis, like Securonix, who does user and entity behavior analytics. Awesome. We also have some open source algorithms. So when you deploy our platform, you get to take advantage of all the open source libraries that exist out there in order for you to find the right algorithm for the right problem. That, where, where'd you come up with the open source idea? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a capitalist, but uh, I, I think that's brilliant. It makes sense. It, we're, we're trying to protect and everybody. And there's been a lot of discussion recently here on Security Guide TV. That's right. About open source Absolutely. and some of the challenges that organizations face with consuming open source technology and platform. Absolutely. So I'll first start with Cloudera's uh, or, uh, uh, perspective on open source, and then I'll get into what we're specifically doing around cybersecurity and open source. So Cloudera and open source has always been an open source company. Okay. Uh, we started with uh, a only two open source projects as part of our platform, and now we're all the way up to 26. Wow. So we constantly look at the open source community and the innovation that's happening within the open source community and bring that into our platform. We have a hybrid open source model. So one side's open source, the other side's proprietary technology. So when it comes to uh, securing those open source you know, components, when it comes to managing and deploying and scaling those open source components across multiple environments, on-prem or in the cloud, that's where Cloudera's proprietary technology comes into place, and that's how we fund all the great development that okay. we've done in the open source community. So you're adding your own security layer, protecting it onto some of the open source projects Absolutely. that you have. And that allows us to fund additional open source uh, projects. One of those open source projects is called Apache Spot. So we just had uh, version 1.0 release. It's Congratulations. A, I appreciate it. The community. It's a, it was a community effort. That's so awesome. uh, us, Intel, um, uh, Cybraix, uh, Webroot, whole bunch of uh, companies wow. in the cybersecurity space and in the big data space and advanced analytics space came together to create a open source cybersecurity project that's optimized for Cloudera's open source platform and Intel hardware so that we can you know, come together as a community and start building these open source algorithms specifically for cybersecurity now, related uses. Wasn't I just talking about that in the last show? It's yes. exactly what I was, it's yep. a coincidence. Yeah. I was asking this guy, why can't we make it all, why can't we make the security open for everybody? Yep. And here, young TJ walks up and starts <laughs> telling us about it, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's what innovation will bring, and you know, there's less boundaries when you're dealing with the open source community versus the proprietary yeah, type yeah, offerings right. for a lot of obvious reasons. I have a theory about the internet and security, and I know this is crazy, and I always say this every year. What if nothing was proprietary? What if there's no secrets? What if nobody, if information wasn't secret, it wouldn't have any value, right? And so 80% of what terrorists get, and when I say terrorists, I'm gonna include hackers, because yep. they're going to be the next people to take us down. Those guys are going to get out of their cave and they're going to go and get a computer and say, forget all that bombs and bullet stuff. We're going to take your grid off, right? Absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, if it was all open, it's like, come on, here's what we do to protect ourselves. Bring it, right? I know it sounds crazy, but if there were no secrets, we, we might not make as many mistakes. 
Because when you're trying to protect your proprietary data, and I'm a capitalist, remember. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I like the open source idea. All these minds coming together Absolutely. and solving something for everybody, right? That's exactly right. We, we, we call it a community approach to cyber threats or fighting cyber threats. Instead of a single organization trying to tackle and, and you know position themselves against the hacker community, bring all the industry experts around to focus on a project that allows them to share analytics, allows them to share you know threat indicators on one central open source platform so that our community can move as fast as that's the black hat community. Cool. This is one of my favorite products so far. Yeah. That is that's we have 80 cool. more to go, but I'm, I'm up there. This is <laughs> really cool. Yes, absolutely. Have you heard of this kind of thing? No. It's the first oh, do we stump Cyber Girl? <laughs> oh, wow. A bit. Apache a bit. spot, yeah. TJ, what do you worry about at night? What, do you, what keeps you up to worry about the cyber world? So I think one of the things I worry about with cybersecurity is just scaling, right? So when people start to collect more and more information, and we're talking about, you know, 100 billion events a day, right? next two or three years, every organization has to start collecting that information. Being able to scale to that volume and sift through that information in an effective manner. Uh, so we have cybersecurity AI companies like Cybreaks building our platform to help us find that needle in the haystack and you know move their analytic runtime down from like eight hours to minutes. Wow. So it's just the scale problem. Scale yeah. problem number one. It yeah. makes sense. I mean, yeah. I, I've always thought that uh, they're not going to get us with some giant complicated uh, program. Yeah. It's going to be some 16 year old in Russia or China that's screwing around and he happens to be the packet that gets through because there's so many other things nobody can stop and he just he gets in, yeah. right? Uh, what, what do you think about this crazy idea? I'd like to come up with this crazy ideas, right? Yeah. So I think somebody ought to invent a way for servers to cycle on and off because there's no power and you don't have a connectivity. Guess what? All that attacking turns off. Now they got to start over again and it delays them. It puts them on the offensive because now they got to say, "Oh, I got to start my hack again. I got to come back. I got to find the right server address." And we're gonna, what, do you, what do you think about that? Does it make sense? I mean, I turn my computers <laughs> off all the time. Yeah, smart. If it's not on, if I'm not using it, it's off. And that scenario would work in the event that no one, that an organization did not did not need to rely on that server. I know it's hard serving up stuff on a continual. See, but I'm thinking you basis. have here's your server one, server two, server three, server one's off. Click. We flip over here, click, click. Maybe you got a whole bunch of honeypots that are servers that go on and off. Just constantly moving. Yeah. Constantly turning on and yeah. off. That would mess those guys up. They'd be mad You know, it that. makes no sense, but some of the greatest ideas come what from... What do you mean it makes no yeah. sense? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, TJ. Uh, it makes a little sense, but as, as everybody's going more mobile, right? I'm downloading well, highly sensitive true. information on my that's phone true. every yep. once in a while, unfortunately. Yeah, so I think it's it's the mobile, high, highly connected internet world that we're living in right yeah. now. Right? Yeah. We Absolutely. saw the DDoS attack on Dyn a little while ago, yep. taking the botnet army and attacking a single organization, so it's a scary time. I read a very interesting article the other day, you might not believe this, Ms. Therese. What? Phones old technology in about 10 years. Phones are going to be out, nobody's going to, phone, that's old technology. It's Believe it or not. wearables, right? The wearables. Different things are talking about. Yeah, yeah, biometrics built in your eyeball and putting the thing the in glasses. your head. glasses. Yeah, well, another thing about wire and hardwire. Neuralink, So yeah. it's hard to believe that a mobile phone is going to be obsolete, but my beeper's obsolete, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's that didn't take that long. They didn't take long at yeah, all, actually. TJ, thanks for coming on the show. Hey. It's just fascinating. Really appreciate it. I feel so good oh, about thank this. thank you. <laughs> Uh, anytime you want to come on the regular show, just call us up and let us know because I, I, I think this is yeah, the place cool to be. Yeah. It's fabulous. Cladera, C L O U D E R A dot com. And thanks for coming on Security Radio with Black Hat 2017. Thank you. Thanks. Fascinating. Thank you. That's not a bad idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, were just, uh, we were just talking about that with the security, white, white security.